Revelation chapter 3, I ministered this morning on getting to get off the fence on one side or the other. Amen. Get off the fence on one side or the other. See, life's about choices. Success is based, success or failure is based on choices. It's not based on uh, necessarily how you were born, how you were raised. It's based on when you come down to, uh, when it comes right down to it, what choices do we make? Love is a choice. Putting your marriage back together is a choice. Watching our finances is a choice. Everything in life is about a choice. So is spiritual life. Revival is a choice. Personal revival is a choice. You choose, and I choose, whether we're going to have a personal revival. Amen. If we're going to experience a, 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 a time in our life where we're revitalized, renewed in the Holy Spirit, strengthened, fired up again, it is because we made a choice to do something. If we are already a child of God. And look to, in, in Revelation chapter 3, verse 14. It says, And to the angel of the church of the Laodiceans write, These things says the Amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. I know your works, that you are neither cold nor hot. I could wish you were cold or hot. So then, because you are lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will vomit you out of my mouth. Because you say I am rich and have become wealthy and have need of nothing, and do you not know that you are wretched, miserable, poor, blind, and naked? I counsel you to buy from me gold refined in the fire that you may be rich, in white garments that you may be clothed, that the shame of your nakedness may not be revealed, and anoint your eyes with eyesalve that you may see. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Therefore be zealous and repent. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come into him and dine with him and he with me. To him who overcomes, I will grant to sit with me on my throne, as I have also overcame and sat down with my father on his throne. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. The very last letter to the last church in Revelations was written to the church in Laodicea. And all of them had something positive or negative that he responded to them to in order to get them, in order to bring about a response or an encouragement. And the lukewarm church was the last one. And he writes this letter, and in, in this letter, as you have heard me read, the Lord was sick. And we know the Lord's whole. He cannot be sick, but figuratively speaking, the Lord is sick. And He's sick because He sees the church that is supposed to be holy and confesses holiness is lukewarm. They've allowed things into their life that have, that have taken the heat out of their life. They once were fervent. They once prayed, they once worshiped with all their might, they once experienced the glorious uh, experience and worship and just loving Him and getting up early and praying, I believe, and seeking Him. And now they're in a situation where they're okay. They've got what they need. And He rebukes them. The Lord begins His message to the church of Laodicea with a rebuke. He says, I know your works are neither cold nor hot. I can wish you were cold or hot, so that because you're lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will vomit you out of my mouth. Now, your, your version may say spew or spit, but the literal, the literal translation for that is vomit. 
It doesn't, that he isn't saying, I'm done with you forever. He's saying, you make me sick. Your lifestyle makes me sick. You are distasteful to me. There's nothing about you that I am drawn to. You see, I want to tell you what Jesus is drawn to, what the Lord is drawn to in your life. He's drawn to Himself. He's drawn to that worship that you have, that you put on, where you love Him, and you want Him, that hunger that you have, that you want Him more than you want anything else. He's drawn to that. You see, if we're in a lukewarm state, we're distasteful. He ignores the flavor of our life. It isn't, that he, it isn't that He's denied Himself because He is in Him. But the, the, the sin is coming up to His nostrils and it makes Him sick. You see, all throughout the, the Bible you see these type of analogies even in the Old Testament when they, the priest would uh, sacrifice on the altar. It was a sweet smell and aroma that would come up toward the heavens and God would smell that because it was, it was an act of obedience. And in that act of obedience, it was a good smell to God. Now let me tell you what else smells before the Lord. Sin. Our saying that we're one way and living another stings before God. And Jesus said, I'd rather have you just completely cold or I'd rather have you completely hot than have you in the middle. I had rather you make a decision to go in all the way or to back out than to have you in a church that is in a lukewarm state, not hungry anymore, not praying anymore, not caring anymore, just sitting in a pew and filling that spot. I'd rather have you hungry. I'd rather have you hot. But there's an interesting thing, and I, I, we, I think sometimes we miss this. The Lord says this for a reason. And the reason that He speaks in such a strong way to us this morning is because of verse 19. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. I'm going to tell you something. He's the best friend you ever have. Jesus is the best friend you'll ever have. But He will not let you get away with sin. Sin's going to hurt you for one, but because He loves you, He will find a way to rebuke you. He doesn't tolerate sin. You see, there shouldn't be any, any fence riding loop one Christians in this church. We ought to be on fire. That's right. We should love them with all our heart. Fence riders will live too close to the edge of grace if they abuse it. They live too close to what? They, 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 they have this question. What can I do and still be a Christian? I said, when you get to that point, you are, you are, you've already missed it. You're in a little warm shape. That's right. Can I do this and still be a Christian? I've had people, is it okay for me to drink? And, and, and I'll tell you what, I get justifications. Here's the justification. Well, Jesus drank. It ain't, it ain't long before those words are coming out. And I'm not going to get into a theological debate about whether Jesus drank fermented wine or not. I don't believe He did, but I'm not going to talk about that this morning. I'm talking about justification. It's fence riding. It's compromise. Well, people do this and people do that. We're not talking about people. We're talking about you. We're not talking about other people. Are you going to get on fire for God or are you going to let other people send you down? You see, you'll never be useful in the kingdom by by compromise. Well, I will never be useful in the kingdom by compromise. Can I drink a little bit? Can I take some pills every now and then? Can I? I got needs. Can I have sex every now and then? I'm not married. Can I? Can I have this? Can I have this? God understands how I'm made. He knows. Oh, I'm meddling today is what I'm doing. You're not going to lie. Maybe if I preached this three months ago, we'd have more people here. And I'll take responsibility for that.
You'll never live fully by living a life of compromise. Some name the name of Christ, but they don't name it with their character. Church, this morning, I'm not talking to, to new believers, brother. I am and I'm not. I am in the sense that we need to grow toward holiness. I'm, but I understand there is a place of growth that needs to take place in our life, and the Holy Spirit speaks to us and says, that's not right. And we say, yes, Lord. I'm not going to do that again. And we turn from that thing. I'm talking about the ones who name the name of Christ and know the Scripture and still live an unholy life. You are in danger. You have one foot in hell and one foot in the church. Jesus wants to refine our life. That's why He brings us to a place of rebuke. If He didn't care for the church, He wouldn't have wrote them a letter. If He didn't care for the people in a lukewarm state, He wouldn't have wrote anything to them. He would have just cast them into hell. But hell wasn't created for, for, for people. But the devil and his angels, the people go there. But He said, as many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. That's His purpose. His purpose is that it will bring us to a place of repentance. He says, I don't want to hurt God again. I don't want to be in a lukewarm state. I don't want to tread my feet over the blood of Jesus, the, 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 the blood that's shed for me. I don't want to walk over that. I don't want to abuse His grace. I know there are many things that Jesus will forgive you of, all of them. I know that He'll forgive me of those things. Thank God for His grace. But I don't want to ever tread there. Nor do I want to take a chance with my soul. You see, Jesus wants to refine our life. And He says, I counsel you to buy from me gold. In verse 18, gold refined in the fire that you may be rich in white garments that you may be clothed that the shame of your nakedness may not be revealed. Sin's always a shame. And anoint your eyes with eyesight that you may see. Are you willing to be refined by the Lord? If you're willing to be refined by the Lord, it's going to cost you something. I'm not...